How do you differentiate a hobby from a passion project? Is it a goal, right? Because passion projects, I think you might want to have a goal. Like if it's, for example, painting, kailangan mo makatapos ng one or two paintings over a period of so-and-so time. That could be a passion project. How do you differentiate those two things, you think? Welcome to Adulting with Joy Spring, the how-tos of your 20s told by 20-something, traversing through life expectantly and with gusto. Well, you can actually have a passion project that's based on your hobby. So it can be, exactly, it is kind of related to a goal. But something very important that we have to remember when we start a personal passion project, especially for our mental health, is if a goal is just a goal. It's okay if you fail at the goal. It's okay if the goal um, changes over time. It's because this is something very personal to you. This isn't something that has to be related to your professional life. It doesn't have to be related to your career. It just has to be something that brings you joy that might be different from, let's say, a hobby, which is something that you might do to unwind, to de-stress. But a passion project has that element of challenge and challenge is actually a very good healthy thing. There is a lot of research that proves that healthy amount of challenge is actually very good for us. I agree with you, you know, that um, starting creative passion projects could really help in your mental health, especially when you treat passion projects as a way for you to express yourself more. And yes. some people are not able to express themselves through words. You know, not everybody can write a journal or sometimes, True. you know, you're too co conscious to write a journal or to start a blog. So you, you do something else. You do something with your hands. And I think the reason why, why mental health can be so clogged up for other people is because we don't find ways to really express ourselves and process our emotions and That's i true. find that when you're doing something creative you're you're actually processing your emotions without you even knowing it but i find micah that the common problem that we'd face when it comes to starting your passion project is people would say you know what great idea i have no time for that so Ooh. what do you say to those people? What do you say to people who are just too tired? They're too tired to start to start a passion project. They're they're too uninterested. And and sometimes you have to be completely honest with yourself that when you're so exhausted, you become uninterested to do anything else but to lie down on your bed, scroll aimlessly on social media or watch something on Netflix. So what do you say to those people? How can you defend the case for starting a passion project which might be better for your mental health than going through social media aimlessly? Well, that's a very, very excellent question, actually, Joyce, because a lot of people are tired, too tired to start a passion project. But a lot of them deep down, I think a lot of these people, they're like, I want to do that. It's just I don't have time. That's actually a good start. Like if you have that feeling of I want to do it, then lean into that because that's actually an important signal that, you know, your, your mind is telling you that you want to be doing something creative. You want to be expressing yourself. And for those who are really struggling, you don't have time, you're exhausted from work or you're exhausted from everything that's happening in the world right now. You can try this very simple rule that um, I share all the time. It is called the 10 minute rule. And how it works is you just show up to do whatever it is that you want to do. So whatever it is, just do it for 10 minutes. And those 10 minutes, do it uninterrupted. And then after 10 minutes, most likely you will find that motivation because motivation is actually a byproduct of doing the work. And what if you're asking me, what if I don't feel like doing it for more than 10 minutes what if after 10 minutes i've done it i did what you said micah i did everything no distractions no whatever and i just don't feel like it give yourself the room to stop but know that you at least tried you took a bias for taking action and honestly that's such a powerful habit to have just letting yourself uh, get into the habit of taking action instead of just you know waiting for things to happen to you um waiting for um I don't know, waiting for the motivation to hit. It's just a very powerful reframe that you can have. So again, just start 10 minutes. Just You can even put a countdown timer. It's actually quite fun if you just put like something very visual that you can see, a countdown timer on your computer, on your phone, whatever. And then just do that thing. And I promise you, you'll probably see the results in just 10 minutes or less. 
That's so true. It, basically, it's start before you're ready, right? With any other, I think that's a that's a principle that's so powerful in any other area of our lives. Start before you're ready, because sometimes we wait for ourselves to be ready, but then while you're waiting, you're constantly having this conversation with yourself that I can't do it because dot dot dot, and then you start exactly. making an argument for why you're not ready. And therefore, why you shouldn't even start. So starting before you're ready actually sparks that movement. It's trajectory that you're looking for. And you cannot have trajectory if you don't first have that movement in your life.